Welcome to Pay-Per-View. I've been asked to explain how I make grimaces. I call these things grimaces because they always look like they're unhappy, look like they're grimacing. Their face is made out of toilet rolls, and I've been asked to explain my technique. I'll do my best. I'd like to say that it was an exact science, but every single one that I've made has been different. Um, so I'll give you what I do when I'm doing it. I'll also swizzle the camera around to give you a second angle. Alright, so first of all we start with the toilet roll. Toilet rolls are very low quality cardboard stuck together with really low quality glue. So I've found wet folding is a miserable experience. I've only ever dry folded them. You've got to be fairly gentle because the cardboard will disintegrate if you mess with it too much. You've got to pick your place for doing the face as well. There's a spiral seam there and a spiral seam there. So I'm going to do most of my face work here. First thing I do is I squish a centre front line. I don't squish the back, just the front. That will give me a reference point down the front of the face and I'll build my features off of that. I'll link that in so you can see it. All right, with that squished, I then have a couple of key decisions to make. I've got to decide how much top lip, where the point of the nose will be, and how big the nose will be. So I'm deciding that the point of my nose will be about there, which means that I have to put in a horizontal crease, but not all the way along. I put it about halfway through the tube, and I reverse it so that it's a neutral crease. That then is going to be a collapse line that I'll use in a little while but it corresponds to the point of the nose. Underneath here will be a top lip. This will be the gaping mouth. This will be the empty head, and the nose and eyes will, do, will go up here. Let's do the remaining bits of the bottom of the top lip. So we need to make a 45 degree fold, or roughly 45 degrees, underneath that horizontal line. It doesn't have to go all the way along but neutral, make it go both ways. So we need a 45 degree line going that way, 45 degree line going that way. Next I need to repeat that 45 degree going this way, but I don't need it to go very far because it's going to be the underneath of the nose and the nostrils. 45 sort of works, it means that the top of the nose and the bottom of the nose kind of line up, which looks good. It also gives you some modelling capacity when you are wanting to do nostrils. All right. So that's the beginnings of the lip, the tip of the nose. Now we have to decide how long we want the nose to be. And we need, I, I tend to make the nose fairly shallow as a fold. So what I need to do is I need to fold from some arbitrary point here up to some arbitrary point here, and that will define the full size of the nose. So I'm going to fold up to about there. And back. There are no landmarks here. You're folding the entire thing by sight. But there's the outside edge of my nose. Now I have to accompany that with a second fold that's just outside of that, that joins down to this original horizontal crease, because it's going to create a collapse zone later. So I fold from the point of the top of the nose down to that horizontal crease, and I bend it both ways. Now I'm trying to be gentle with the cardboard because it's already disintegrating on me. Right, let me just line in that last crease that I've put in, and you'll see what I'm going to now do. What I now have are all of the creases necessary for the face. Tip of the nose, this diamond here is the nose. This V-shaped thing is eventually going to be waist and be hidden. This is the top lip. I'll remodel that once I've collapsed the nose. So my first task 
is to collapse the nose. And that takes a little bit of coordination because you've got to get the inner line as a mountain, the outer line as a valley. This is going to be a valley as well. So we're going to have a V-shaped valley and a V-shaped mountain, which will force there to be a mountain joining those two points. Same on both sides. I'll show you what I mean. So the first thing I do is I encourage the outside edge of the nose and ask the other line to go underneath. Doesn't want to, the paper fights you. But the paper is subservient, it will do what you tell it to eventually. So notice please, I've got a little pleat there now. That's my nose. Now I've got to, I've got one opportunity to sharpen the nose because eventually this whole assembly will be uh, in a different place. So right now, I pinch that original fold together and sharpen the point. Now I open up what will be the top lip. And I'm creating almost a water bomb base here. So you can see that what I've got here now is the basis of the face morphology. This is the nose, there's the tip of the nose, there's the top lip, there's the mouth, there's the head, and the eyes will go up here. The rest is modeling and wrestling. So what I've got to do is I've got to encourage the nose tip down while not losing the side creases of the nose. That's the first thing that you need about seven fingers for. But it eventually does sit down and although these the top lip lines were originally running off at 45 degrees, that's way too much paper. So I now trim them and round the top lip a little bit. And that then allows me to start working out a way of getting the recessing the top lip into the side of the head. We do that by encouraging that crease to close, making sure that the nose bits don't unfold as well. So now you'll notice inside here we've got these two st sticking out things on the inside and you've got to push them, I use my thumb, to push those two things up and what that does is it actually causes the top lip to recess into the cheeks. Same on the other side, either thumb or pointer finger, all the time making sure that the nose stays together. Just see that what we're doing is actually pushing the bits of the top lip up into the cheeks. All right, so it's almost time to start making the mouth because that will help redefine everything as well. Just tidying up the nose again. It's tried to undo itself. Doing a little bit of smushing to stop that. So those two flaps now pushed up and you can push up the um, top lip a bit as well will extend and shape the nose in a little while as well. Now I've got to make the mouth. No hard and fast rules here. What I do is I do a pleat to get rid of excess paper and to give me a better shaped top lip. And that also means that if I do that, you'll notice that I have a sort of a figure eight uh, open mouth, but when you close it, the top lip and the bottom lip meet. And in fact, if they overlap a little bit, that's good because then that gives you the opportunity to model lips. So at the moment, I'm letting them overlap and I'm squishing them so that the chin is formed and that reinforces the top lip and the nose as well. 
I've just squished the mouth together. I'm going to put a lip on the bottom just by turning the raw edge in a little bit. It'll also make him grin in a crazy sort of a way, which isn't a bad thing. Now, because we did that pleat, we can also reach inside the tube with a carefully placed finger and pull that cardboard out of the way as well. And that just makes the mouth work a little bit better. Just gets rid of the paper cardboard from the mouth and it just makes it sit better. So now I've got the beginnings of a mouth. The top lip, it's a little skew if. I can put lips on that if I really want to. And the more I work with the mouth, the grumpier he becomes. So I'm going to leave him a bit like that, I think, because I'm quite happy with that. I will accentuate the bottom lip so that it looks like he's got his mouth open. Do you notice that the top lip now is recessed into the tube? Roughly the same on both sides. And if I really wanted to mess with it, I could make it symmetrical. I've found that it doesn't look as good if it is symmetrical, so don't be too worried that it's not exactly the same both sides, because that's just character. So now we've got the nose. We've now got to give him a set of eyes. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. The easiest way is just to push a really deep, deep pleat across and when you push it you can then reach inside and pull the pleat and that forms the nose bridge and the eyebrow ridge. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to push just at the top of the nose a deep pleat. So open up the top of the head and then reach inside and grab the resultant pleat and pull it up and immediately you get eyes. The nose disappears up inside that crease, which is a good thing. It forms cheekbones, which you can then mess with to further emphasize the nose. I'm going to sharpen the nose and make the nose a little bit crooked because he looks better when he's got a bit of a crooked nose. Looks like somebody's punched him in the face. You can open up the eye sockets by sticking your fingers up into the eye sockets. You can model his cheekbones a little bit more and round his empty head. And there you have it, the basis of a grimace. No two I've ever folded are the same, but the basic morphology is pretty well the same. That's Mr. Gold, for example, and you'll notice that they're clearly related, but they're slightly different. Mr. Gold's uh, mouth and chin is much tidier and much more symmetrical. I actually like this guy better because he's not quite as symmetrical. I can mess with the corners of the mouth to tie that in. I can open up the lips to give him a, a bit of a stunned expression. You see the colour of the tube inside, but you can reach in, remember, and pull that out of the way. I've been painting these too, and finding that I have to paint inside the tube as well as outside the tube, because when you open up the mouth, you see inside the tube, and most of the toilet rolls I have access to are white on the inside. That's not a problem, it's just a design challenge that you've got to work with. There's my grimace, and you can see he's nice and round, relatively symmetrical, and the tube hasn't been damaged too much. I could then paint him and texture him, give him a little bit more character, but he's already asserting his own personality. I hope that helps. I hope that helps you understand how these models are formed. As you can see from the gallery of grimaces around him. These were all folded in the last couple of days using the same technique. No two of them really look the same. And it all comes down to where you put creases, how you decide where the creases are, and um, a little bit of luck really because the cardboard sort of asserts itself as you're doing it. I wish you luck. Give it a try.